Welcome back to the 13th segment of my Last Remnant 100% Completion New Game Plus Hard Mode Run. Uh, there's a lot going on in this segment, so I will have uh, quite a bit of commentary to add. Uh, right off the bat here, we're returning to Athlum to pick up a soldier that is available after completing the Koningsdorf uh, portion of the story. Uh, the one I'm looking for here is Abel, and uh, we're going to use him to complete the guild task for crafting the Divine Francisca. Uh, we just got to gather a few components for him, and uh, he'll be able to help us satisfy that uh, guild task. Uh, with him in tow, now we're going to go to Darkened Forest. We've got a couple of rare monsters we're going to take down. And then uh, similar to what I did uh, at Fornstrand, is, uh, I'll be doing a little bit of off-camera work uh, when it comes to clearing out the uh, mobs in this area. Uh, the first rare monster that uh, we're looking to uh, take care of is Thanatos. Thanatos is a homunculus-type enemy. And uh, when you uh, first enter the area, you're looking for the uh, Leapfrog spawn. And then when you get to the area where I just paused, if you do not see uh, a secondary spawn like the uh, Echidna Moths, then uh, that's the indication that you should have a rare on the map. And sure enough, there he is. Uh, so uh, there's really nothing I need to obtain from this fight, so I don't have to save scum this one. All we have to do is defeat Thanatos for the guild task. Concern to you. Great. Come on out. Okay, later. So on the first trip through Darkened Forest, I pointed out this harvest point uh, from which you can get the three pieces of divine metal that uh, we obtained earlier for a guild task. But now we're coming back. Now that we have Abel in the party, uh, I need to harvest at least two dragon scales. He needs that to upgrade uh, towards the divine Francisca. And you can see here that we got uh, 10, which is more than what we need. Uh, from here, I'm going to move on to the end of the area, and I'm going to save it right outside the uh, final, final map. Uh, on the final map, you can find the rare... Uh, enemy king plant. It's a large uh, tree ant type enemy. Uh, I do not get it with this visit and so I'm going to save it there and then cut away and uh, return when uh, I actually do have the rare spawn. Uh, so it's going to save you as the viewer. Uh, multiple uh, views of me running through Darkened Forest hoping to get that spawn. Now off camera I'm also going to accomplish uh, multiple other tasks. We've got some mobs to take care of. We need to uh, defeat nine mandragoras uh, which are the uh, smaller um, plant type enemies, smaller tree ant type enemies. Uh, nine of those, and we need to split one of them for a medicinal mandragora seedling. We also need to take down 14 glagonos, which are the uh, the homunculus type enemies, and from those we need one glagonos fragment. Uh, we need to take down 21 echidna moths, and uh, something to keep in mind with those is that uh, echidna moths appear on the map, but uh, when you actually engage them, you get a combination of echidna moths and greater echidna moths. And so in order to uh, satisfy the 21 uh, required for the guild task, you may need to take down more than uh, what your chain uh, is built up to. You can see here I got those uh, components that I was looking for. And then uh, finally, the last one I need is one giant shellfly scalp, which you see I also obtained. Uh, you split those from a giant shellfly, and uh, those were found near the entrance. So with those all out of the way, uh, we're going to move on to the final area and uh, take on King Plant, which uh, is, again is uh, one of the larger tree ant type enemies. Now, I'm stopping here for a moment to point out the uh, Dead Heart. Uh, Dead Heart is a remnant that you can loot, but uh, you do not want to do that prior to, to uh, completing the quest Hearts. If you loot the Dead Heart before you uh, complete the quest, uh, the quest becomes unavailable. And since uh, we need to complete all the quests, 
for the uh, most difficult version of the final boss. Uh, we cannot be doing that ahead of time. So uh, we'll come back here uh, during the quest hearts and uh, obtain that remnant that way. Alright, so nearly everything is taken care of here in Darken Forest. We just have one more task, and that is the quest Hearts. And so uh, we're going to head straight over to Illusion to initiate the quest. You need to find Haruko, which is the former Academy leader. Uh, she can be found in the pub here, and uh, you need to have an interaction with her. Uh, the thing is, she moves around to multiple cities. And so from Illusion, uh, we will be heading over to Melfina, and then onward to uh, Silla to Athlum. Uh, to Nagapur, and then finally back to Salapalay, and it's at that return visit that uh, she offers you the quest for hearts. Uh, we'll return here to Darken Forest, make our way through very quickly, and deal with uh, a couple of boss fights at the end to fulfill that quest. And then uh, at the very end, uh, you do get to have the dead heart. And, and unfortunately, I wish that uh, we didn't take it with, because uh, Arena is actually going to pester you for that uh, remnant uh, until you give it to her. And uh, if you're looking to have Arena request uh, any other material, other, other uh, weapon or accessory, you'll have to equip the dead heart on Rush if you don't want her to have it, and then uh, her attention will be focused on whatever the uh, other requested item uh, may be. But uh, so long as you have it available in your accessory inventory, that'll be the one thing she asks for.
All right, so we have followed Haruko around to multiple towns, and the last one we need to meet up with her at a Uh But before I do that, I'm going to do a quick little side mission. It'll only take a few moments. I'm going to duck here into uh, the second path, and I'm going to run to the harvest point from which we can get uh, platinum ore. We did that earlier with Melamis. Uh, we need two more pieces of platinum ore for Abel. And so uh, very quickly, I'm going to run to that, harvest the two pieces that Abel needs, uh, and then we will pick up where we left off uh, by heading over to Salopale and speaking with Haruko there.
not underestimate them. Damn it! Damn it! No text about their flank. I know I'm good. I got it. Damn it. That was mine.
still plenty of power it. left in these old bones. Damn it! That was mine! What are you looking at? My contract cannot end soon enough. Observe my stats carefully before making a choice. You can always count on me. So hearts is complete and uh, you can see here I'm doing a little bit of rearranging in preparation for the next quest. Uh, I've put Pegasus in the lead and it I need to put a problem. couple more members in that squad so that he has enough AP to use uh, Megalore on the first turn. Uh, the next quest is the Ladies of Bloody Alice which uh, can be notoriously difficult uh, even for a, a fairly well developed party. You've come this far into the game you would think there wouldn't be a quest uh, that's going to hold you up uh, but it's possible that you could get stuck on this and so uh, in order to deal with the trash mobs I'm going to make sure that I have a battlefield wide clearing ability like Megalore uh, at my disposal. You could use Gay Bulg, you could use uh, Blackout or some other Arcana. Uh, there's a couple other options as well, but uh, since I'm using Pegasus, I'm going to go ahead with Megalore. Uh, the quest itself can be found uh, in Melfina. You need to have uh, interacted with Nora enough to where uh, she'll move locations, and so this is advancing towards her parameter bonus, and I did uh, all of that. Uh, with all of my multiple trips to Athlum, and so uh, she already had her final uh, red bubble available to uh, to move her over to this location. Uh, all it takes is a uh, conversation with her, and uh, you're transported to the battlefield. There's uh, multiple reinforcements to deal with, and so uh, once again, I would recommend uh, centering your force around uh, a battlefield-wide clearing ability. Uh, as uh, you're familiar with, I have uh, many uh, item arts that I can use to wipe out uh, large groups of enemies as well.
This one looks loaded. Better hit harder than that. I know I'm good. I got it. This is what I've been searching for. Perhaps next time. A second too late. Damn it! That was mine! So as the quest wraps up, uh, I'm going to be taken to the screen where she gives me a multiple rewards. And as you can see, I'm throwing away all of those solitaire earrings. Uh, that's a, uh, an accessory that can be cloned. And just like before, when I discarded the metallic studs we found in Robelia's basement, uh, I don't want that to clone my uh, or clone over the safety earlets that I have. Uh, there is a better. A better accessory than the safety earlet, the storm cloud bolt. I could craft that, uh, but I'd rather just hold on to the safety earlets for as long as possible. Uh, before we tackle the next quest, I am quickly running over to Illusion to point out that now, with the completion of uh, the Ladies of Bloody Alice, the uh, Ring of the Labyrinth Guild is now available in Illusion. And uh, so, this is the reason why I tackled the uh, Hearts first and then the Ladies of Bloody Alice, because if you're looking to add Haruko to your party, uh, you'll need to unlock this guild by completing the Ladies of Bloody Alice quest. And so, uh, again, with that out of the way, all I'm showing you here is that uh, Haruko could be added if you wished. Uh, she's not going to make it into my final team on this run, uh, but you can see here that uh, that she's available. And uh, after this, we're going to return to Malfina, and we're going to take on the Seeker of the Ancient Path.
Alright, so the Seeker of the Ancient Path is a uh, quite challenging quest, uh, similar to the Ladies of Bloody Alice as far as difficulty goes. Uh, the quest itself actually is pretty long, so uh, here you have to travel through the first path and uh, you're going to make your way to three separate dead ends uh, in this uh, fairly large uh, dungeon. Uh, at the end of the dead ends are uh, three sets of mini bosses. Uh, they're all called the Tested, although they're different monster types. And uh, if you're having trouble with those, you can pretty much guarantee that uh, your final fight is going to be uh, especially challenging, if not unwinnable. Uh, but you'll see here that uh, we'll make it through uh, these fights with a, a little bit of difficulty. And then at the very end of the area, after you've defeated all sets of uh, three of the tested, uh, you'll be able to take on the charged idol, which uh, is especially challenging. Uh, with that, uh, you'll see in the fight that we're going to focus on just deadlocking it with one of my tank unions, uh, taking care of all of the uh, additional enemies that are in the fight and then uh, doing what we can to keep morale high and uh, our HP up and uh, hopefully get some flanks and rear assaults on it.
looking at? Like that, is it? of no concern to you. I hope this will make me more useful.
Glorious day! Looking this up for kicks. Stop staring.
Let's kick some A. Perhaps next time. Damn it! That was mine! A second too late. All right, so that wraps up The Seeker of the Ancient Path. Uh, again, quite a series of challenging fights. Uh, the reward for that, though, is that uh, Rush finally learns Psionics uh, quite late in the game, but uh, definitely useful if you're doing a new game plus. And then uh, in addition to that, uh, you could recruit Univer uh, in the guild here in Malfina. Uh, another worthwhile addition. Uh, does not come with any uh, healing abilities, but uh, is a, a Sage or th uh, Thaumaturge candidate. And uh, his uh, high-leveled Psionics are uh, certainly a welcome addition to a team. Uh, but here, we've already taken care of our uh, needed morale shifting arts, and so uh, he'll be uh, passed over as well. Uh, the next quest, uh, we're heading right on over to Nagapur, uh, wrapping up nearly all the quests that we can uh, before reaching Underwalt except for uh, a single quest that I've intentionally left out uh, until we reach that area. But the next one is going to be uh, UFO. And so uh, with Jaeger in the party you'll find him in the pub in uh, Nagapur. Uh, in addition to doing uh, the UFO quest we've got a couple little side tasks that we can do uh, as we make our way through the aqueducts. So our first side task during the UFO quest uh, involves taking down uh, some of these Glacia Labellus that we find uh, at the early point in the dungeon. Now we've already fought enough to satisfy their own guild tasks. You may recall we need to defeat six of them uh, for their own guild tasks, but now we need to revisit it now that we have uh, Melamus in our party. Uh, we need to capture and split one uh, for some Archfiend fluid. He needs uh, three pieces of Archfiend fluid total. Uh, and that is, again, to upgrade his weapon to the Deathbringer, uh, which, uh, again, we recruited him so that uh, we wouldn't have to craft that from scratch. Uh, in addition to, uh, to that, uh, since we are capturing and splitting them, uh, this is our opportunity to pick up the Glacia Labellus Larynx, and uh, you need one of those. So that is a, a rare component obtained from a split. And uh, you'll see here that uh, we'll take on the first mob and not get what we're looking for. Uh, but uh, that's going to force me to fight the second one in the area, and I'll get exactly what I need after that. Uh, following that fight, uh, I'm going to save it right outside the door after a little bit of dialogue from Jaeger before we move on to the next area, and the reason for that is I'm looking for a rare enemy that needs to spawn in that area, similar to what I did in Darkened Forest where I saved it right outside where the King Plant is. Uh, I'm going to save it before we move on to where we can find Siren. Uh, Siren is a, a rare uh, Hydra-type enemy that uh, we need to defeat for its own guild task, but we also need to split it to obtain a Dwarven Core. Do not underestimate them! Watch 
yourself this time, oh, back okay? In the saddle. Alright, there you have it. You can see that we have the uh, Glacial Abolus Larynx. Uh, you needed one of those for its guild task. And uh, you also see that we obtained the Archfiend Fluid that uh, Melamus was looking for. He did need a, a total of three. Uh, he's going to clone uh, everything that we get from this split uh, until he gets at least the three that he's looking for. And so you'll see here that uh, he ended up with five in his inventory. Doesn't matter that he overshot it. Uh, that leaves two more components together uh, before he will upgrade to the Deathbringer, and then uh, that will be satisfied. So we'll take care of that during this uh, segment as well. And uh, as I mentioned, I'm going to save it right outside the door to the next area uh, in the event that uh Siren has not spawned. Well, it just so happens that uh, he did spawn on this visit, but uh, again, for the, the sake of keeping uh, the video simple, uh, I did uh, put a break here just in case it hadn't. So in this area, we've got another one of those sliding platform puzzles. Uh, it's not uh, incredibly challenging, but it's also not straightforward either. And so for that reason, I'm going to move through the area uh, kind of slower than normal so that if you were following along, uh, you would be able to reference this video uh, for your own uh, walkthrough. This is not uh, an area that I have to go through that often. You really only have to make one trip to Worms Keep. And so it's uh, understandable if this is not something you'd have memorized. And uh, I didn't either for the sake of transparency. I did uh, have a little map to reference uh, just so that I wouldn't get completely off course. Now we slid the first platform over and uh, when we make our way back around that's where we'll find Siren. Uh, Siren is the rare that we're looking to take down here for its own guild task. Uh, but again that we also want to split it to obtain uh, Dwarven Core. 
and uh, while it's a it's a one-time rare uh, it has a hundred percent capture rate uh, the dwarven core split is still not guaranteed it has about a three percent chance of uh, being obtained from that split uh, that being said i would still recommend uh, save scumming uh, the siren for that item again because it has a hundred percent capture rate uh, you'll see here that uh, i'm going to do the same i'll save it right before we take it down i ended up having to fight it twice in order to get the dwarven core and then uh, after that we will complete the remainder of this puzzle and at the very end uh, there's an accessory that uh, is a one-time only accessory cannot be crafted uh, cannot be cloned and it is the uh, cloistral belt uh, it gives a bonus to uh, katana uh, related arts and uh, since uh, rush here is uh, the wielder of a, uh, a night bloom uh, that will be going to him No concern to you. So just inside Worm's Keep, uh, right inside this hallway, you're going to be taken into a fight with uh, Lob Omen right off the bat, uh, really with no warning. Uh, after that fight is uh, completed, Lob Omen's going to run away, and you actually have to uh, fight it a grand total of four times before you finally corner it and are able to uh, complete the quest. Now after this first fight, uh, the only way you're going to encounter Lob Omen is if you get into fights with uh, Death Claws. Uh, you can ignore the... Uh, uh, vile lizard type enemies you'll see in the area those are not going to trigger a fight with uh, where lob omen is included uh, but the death claw type enemies are and so uh, in various points in the castle uh, i would advise just chaining all of the death claws in that particular area together uh, in hopes that you'll get the the lob omen included in the fight uh, you'll see that uh, with uh, one of the first fights that I try, I clear all of the Death Claws in the room out and I don't get a Lob Omen fight, but when I return to the, the, the area later, uh, there's suddenly a, a Death Claw that wasn't there before. And uh, lo and behold, that's where Lob Omen was hiding. And so uh, you may encounter the same thing, you might think you've cleared everything out, but just revisit uh, some of the early areas of the castle and you may find that there's a monster icon uh, on the map there that uh, 
was not there previously. That's uh, your ticket to fighting La Bowman. Uh, the, the middle two fights uh, can be fought in uh, any sequence, but the final fight is going to take place uh, in the, uh, the final room of the area where we fought Jaeger and La Bowman uh, in the early part of the story. Uh, it's at the northern part of the map, and so uh, there's not much use in uh, taking that out uh, prior to the last fight, because that is where the final fight with La Bowman will be found. Uh, the La Bowman itself is not terribly challenging, but it is one of those enemies that uh, can use Blaster, and uh, certainly in a hard mode uh, playthrough like this is, uh, I've said it before, Blaster is very cheap since it does percentage-based damage, uh, which can be over 100%, and there's really not much you can do about it besides uh, applying Orphic Ward. of no concern to I you. got it. Damn it! That was mine! This is just the beginning. It. Damn it! That was mine! Come on out! Okay, later.
that! You'll be alright now. Check this out! I need the other one! The other one! Damn it! That was mine!
are you looking at? This is of no concern to you. I got it! Damn it! That was mine! So that wraps up the quest UFO and before we move on to our next quest uh, we're going to do a little side trip to the sixth path. Now the sixth path will appear after Coding Store if, if you've already unlocked the first, second, fourth, and fifth paths. Uh, if you have not, you'll have to wait until you have spoken uh, with Oswald near the very end of the game uh, to unlock the sixth path and uh, beyond that the final fortress and seventh path. So if you don't want to wait until after the battle at the Holy Plain uh, to open this area, you'll have to have opened the first, second, fourth, and fifth path, uh, which we've already done through, uh, through our own exploration of the world. Uh, in this area, we're just going to uh, dip in very quickly, uh, hit up the first harvest point uh, to obtain one eternal bulb, 
and one voltaic crystal. Now we've already obtained voltaic crystals. Those can be found in Numer Mine. Uh, we picked up four of those in order to hire Melamus in the first place. Uh, he's going to need another one. And again, one eternal bulb. Those are the final two components needed for the Deathbringer. So we'll grab those, uh, return to a, uh, a town. He'll make his upgrade to the Deathbringer and we'll be able to satisfy that guild task. All right, so now that Melamus has his final components, we are returning to a town, and here I'm showing you that he has upgraded to the Deathbringer. Uh, it certainly saved us a lot of uh, obtaining of components to craft it from scratch, and we actually saved uh, quite a bit of money. It saved about 160,000 gold uh, just to hire Melamus and let him do the upgrading himself. Uh, from this point, though, uh, we're going to move on to the next quest, uh, which we will find here in Bayaluk. shall strive to do my best. It is an honor. Am I doing my father proud? shall strive to do my best. All right, so after a little bit of party rearranging, uh, we are now ready to take on that one quest that everyone's waiting for. Yeah, just kidding. I'm actually going to go over here and uh, deal with infestation first. Uh, this is one of those quests that I actually uh, typically tend to put off towards the end of the game because uh, you end up taking a lot of uh, a lot of weaker monsters down, and it can raise your BR unnecessarily, and you really don't get any kind of reward from it that's uh, especially worthwhile. Uh, but since we've already done our grind, and I'm not uh, especially concerned with... Uh, keeping our BR that much lower any longer. Uh, I figure I'll take care of this now. You'll see that I put uh, David in charge and I once more uh, put him in a uh, fast formation, the belt formation. Uh, he's got enough AP at the start of the round to use Gaybolg and that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to uh, repeat Gaybolg through this fight uh, as much as it's given to us uh, to hurry up and take care of all these uh, trash mobs. This is a quest that's available very early in the second half and so we are more than prepared to deal with it. It's just a wisp of a thing. Stay bold, I call upon thee! Yes. 
All right, so with Infestation complete, I'm actually going to move on this time to take on the Fallen. And uh, I am going to save it before I do so. Uh, off camera, I'm going to uh, break away and restore all of my consumables. Uh, it's possible I'll need quite a few for this fight. Uh, but this is the notorious fight that a lot of players uh, do hit a wall with. Uh, they may end up just saving it for a separate playthrough. But uh, we are more than prepared. We have plenty of morale options. We have uh, a handful of... Uh, units that can use Cachexia and uh, I'll show here in this fight uh, how to avoid the end of turn attacks by using Cachexia to completely wipe uh, the Fallen's AP. Uh, as long as uh, the last uh, acting character or uh, as long as it is used, we'll say, after the last action of the Fallen is taken, uh, he will not be able to refill his AP. And that's where some people get confused, is that uh, if you use Cachexia, but then the Fallen still takes other actions where uh, it damages you in any way, it actually charges up its AP by dealing damage to you, uh, similar to what the Baltaro set uh, provides for you as the player. Uh, this uh, enemy can charge its AP by dealing damage, and so at the very end of the turn, uh, Players are often surprised that they use Cachexia early in the round and uh, were still hit with an AoE attack. Uh, it's important that Cachexia be the last art that, uh, or at least goes off after the Fallen has used its last action. And uh, by doing that, uh, or by ensuring that that goes off, uh, you'll want to make sure it happens by a union that's on the flank or on the rear.
didn't expect an attack from the side. Huh? I meant to do that. I know I'm good. I still have more powers waiting to be So ready. there you have it. The Fallen is taken care of. Uh, that completes the quest. The Fallen, uh, we can now advance safely into Underwalt without fear of any more missable quests. Uh, we want to make sure that you've taken care of this before you set foot in Underwalt, otherwise it does disappear. Uh, but we use Cachexia, and uh, even though I said that's a sound strategy, I think the team is uh, well equipped to uh, handle this fight without it. And so uh, I'm going to go ahead and restore my game and uh, do the fight all over again without Cachexia. We'll rely on our morale options, uh, we'll hang out on the flank and uh, rear assaults and we'll use some uh, defensive moves to get through this and uh, show that it's certainly doable without the, uh, the cheapness that is Cachexia. Attack from the side, huh? Next time you're dead. Oh, what are you doing? I meant to do that.
I owe you my life.
this one's putting up a fight. Check this out. I still have Who more to be my waiting to be released. All right, that is much more satisfying to do it without Cachexia. Now, if you've reached this uh, point in the game and you're struggling with the fight, uh, I'm not at all knocking the use of Cachexia. Uh, a team that has uh, potentially lower stats at this point uh, could be struggling with the end-of-turn AoEs, and uh, Cachexia is certainly uh, a way to deal with that. Uh, our reward for completing the quest is uh, Rush has learned wards, Impressive. and uh, we have access to the ancient ruins, and uh, if you wished, you could go to the guild here in Balak and uh, pick up Windgale. Um, but uh, we're basically uh, in the clear to, to advance the story and head on into Underwalt without uh, missing out on any other quests. Now I'm also showing here sort of the current status of the team. Uh, I do like to typically end my Fallen videos by showing uh, what, what my classes are, what uh, my stats and equips are. Uh, as far as uh, equips go, I really haven't done much in the way of upgrading. There's a couple exceptions, but uh, the majority of these are either starting weapons or uh, items that can be found or purchased in uh, shops. Uh, same thing with accessories. Uh, really the only accessory I crafted uh, was the worm charm for oaks. Everything else uh, has either been found or uh, purchased in a store. Uh, now, uh, all that being said, I'm, I'm also going to state that uh, I only had to fight the fallen twice. And so uh, there was not any sort of trickery or redoing of the, the fights. Uh, they really were the... the Two fights done in succession and uh, there were no trial runs and so uh, as intimidating as the fight can be if you've set your team up uh, well and it's uh, it's functioning uh, the way that you expect it to uh, either by uh, having uh, appropriate classes or uh, by filtering your arts out so that you get the commands you want uh, the fight can be a lot easier than uh, what a lot of players videos may make it out to be now here I'm just gonna end uh, I've got a couple of uh, uh, tasks I need to do off camera. I need to uh, revamp some of my character skills. We've got some new skills added to uh, a lot of people's uh, lists. And so I'm going to do that before we head on to the next video.